Hello. We are live. If you guys see me at any point stepping over something, my dog is literally underneath the table right now. We've had thunderstorms for the last few hours. I think that the thunderstorms are done. I don't expect that we're going to have any power outages or Wi-Fi outages. But if that does happen, then I will reschedule this event. Um, I will likely reschedule it to sometime in the middle of next week. Um, so just please stay tuned for that. If you guys want to take a look at the shop right now while we're waiting to get started, please feel free. The link is right there with this little QR code. And that's me. My name is Brittany Bly. I am the founder of Pop Shop America. Today we are making candles. We are making wood wick candles. So I have my kit right here in front of me. This is a kit that you can get from popshopamerica.com or you can get it on etsy.com through Pop Shop America. I'm going to take you through all the supplies, everything you need to know, melting wax, blending essential oils, all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to make our candles from beginning to end and we're going to learn a lot of fun stuff along the way. So you'll see me kind of go back and forth. I have to get really close to you guys to be able to change out all of these titles, but I think they're super helpful. So if you guys want, every single time we do these craft classes, we always have a coupon code. So it's always 15% off. If you use that code craft with Brittany at checkout, so you can get this kit if you like, or anything else for 15% off. It's only valid today and early tomorrow, and then it goes away, but it, it will come back for the workshop next week. So please feel free. It looks like we have a couple people here that are joining us. We are live on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitch. So I'm going to tell you guys the upcoming schedule. I don't know why these are, here we go. I don't know why they, all the titles are always out of order in the platform. It's so ridiculous. I'm always just like shuffling through them to find the right ones because they just like reorder themselves for no apparent reason. So we are making candles with wood wicks tonight. Let me run you through our upcoming schedule. Then we'll go ahead and get started. So tonight is June 8th. The next class is June 10th, you guys. So actually on Saturday. So I'll be in the office on Saturday. That's where I'm at right now. I'm in the warehouse. I'm in our office. On June 10th, we're having this super sale. It's going to be so much fun. So if you go to the website, if you go to poshompamerica.com slash events, um, from the main page, it's over all the way on the right-hand side. If you click that link, you'll be able to find this event. So June 10th at 11 a.m., we have a ton of finished handmade products from so many different businesses across the country that are so cool. And we're going to be doing the super sale. So everything is going to be less than $10. And I mean, we have really cute dresses, t-shirts, art, prints, jewelry, all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to have a bunch of stuff that's like $1, $2. So if that interests you, please join us. That's on June 10th at 11 a.m. Our next workshop is June 15th. So next Thursday, we're doing astrology or zodiac embroidery on... June 22nd for Pride Month, we are making rainbow macrame earrings. They're going to be so cute and wearable and super fun. And I love a good rainbow. And then on June 29th, we've got Relaxed in Color, which is our celebration of adult coloring. We will be focusing on summer doodles. So we will have all kinds of ideas about how to simply make lots of fun summery things like swimming pools or plants or flowers, snow cones, things that you can draw that are really simple. None of this is going to be complex or advanced. So if you are a beginner or if you just want to have some fun with adult coloring, that's a really great event. Anyway, that's the upcoming schedule. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you guys all of the supplies in the kit. I want to show you everything you need to make candles with wood wicks. I've got my wax melting right here. So let's go ahead and look at these supplies. But if you're crafting along with me, you may want to go ahead and start melting your wax. 
a watch pot never boils, right? It does take a little bit of time. And something that's really important whenever we're melting wax, any kind of candle wax, we always want to melt it on the lowest temperature possible. So think about the way that you melt chocolate. If you've ever made soap before, it's really similar to how you want to think about melting melt and pour soap. You want to keep the temperature as low as possible. We'll keep talking about that over the next hour, and I'll explain why. But for now, you guys are going to want to start melting your wax. So I've got my wax right here. I've got this little pourer, but this is not something that you need. You do not need a contraption like this. You don't need a setup like this. You can use a stovetop or you can use a microwave. If you're using a microwave, just make sure you have a microwave safe bowl. You can also use a mason jar with a lid undone and just fill this maybe about halfway. Put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. Give it a stir. Continue that process until all of the wax is liquid. If you're working from stovetop, then something that we have included in this kit is probably going to be a really great supply for you. So here we've got our instructions on top. We've got flowers, gemstones. Let's go ahead and open this up so you can see this really thoroughly. We've got little warning labels right here. We've got our wood wicks right here. We've got our um, little stickers. These are gonna hold our wood wicks in place. And this is our wood wick holder as well, right? So this attaches to the jar and the bottom of this piece. Let me get really close so you can see this. And then the wood wick goes in there. Once we get to this step, I'll show you again, but right now I just really want you to see all of the supplies just to make sure that everything makes sense. And you guys, please feel free. I have the chat right here in front of me. Let me just show you. Kablam! So if you want to drop a question or just any concern, anything like that in the chat, I can open this up and see it in real time. So please let me know along the way. So this is a double-sided sticker. This is going to attach to the bottom of the vessel and the bottom of our metal piece, and then our wood wick is gonna slide right on in there like that. We'll do this again once we get to that step, but for right now, we just wanna take a look at all of the supplies. So we have gemstones, we have dried flowers, we have some cute little sticker labels so you can label your candles, give it as a gift, write your name on it, write what essential oils you included, anything like that, give it a name. And we have popsicle sticks, which are perfect for stirring along the way. We've also got our essential oils. We carry 22 different essential oils. So likely if somebody is making candles or using this kit or watching this video later, they might have completely different essential oils than what I have here what you have at home. It's really anything goes. Whatever scents you love, use those. Here we've got a mason jar full of wax. We have got more wax right here. And last, we have our vessels. So I'm gonna set that all to the side and let's get back to melting wax. So for anybody that is using a stove top, you do not need something like this. This is great if you wanna make candles regularly, if you wanna make candles you know, for holidays every year to give as gifts, um, something like that if you're thinking about starting a business. But if you just wanna make candles once or twice, do it for fun, do it for a bridal shower, that kind of thing, then actually this mason jar is gonna be a lot better for you. This mason jar, we just unscrew the lid, Put it on the stove and you're gonna make a double boiler. So you're gonna use a slightly larger pot with a small amount of water at the bottom. You're gonna put this in the center. Now what you wanna make sure is that that water is really low because you don't want any water to get into that wax, right? Water and wax don't mix. 
But what we're doing is we're creating the same environment that you would with if you were melting chocolate, where you want to melt this low and slow and you want to control that heat. So that's why I recommend putting it inside of a pot with a little bit of water at the bottom, keep it on low. Because we're going to keep the heat on low, because with the microwave, you're going to microwave in 30 second intervals, stir it and then keep melting. It is something that's going to take a few minutes, but we always want to keep the wax as cool as possible. If you remember, I said that before. The reason that we want to keep the wax as cool as possible is because we have more control in the way that it looks in the finish of the wax if we pour it when it's nice and cool. So wax can actually burn at high temperatures and it starts to act somewhat unpredictably when it's very hot. So what we wanna do is we wanna melt it on low. And for this, I'm even gonna, I have my wax nice and melted, so I'm even gonna turn this off. And that way it's even cooler by the time I'm ready to pour. So the wax that we're using, the wax that I have included in this kit is a soy wax. So when you use this mason jar, once you're done with the mason jar, you can actually put this in the dishwasher, clean it out, use it again. You can use this for, you know, food prep or holding sauces or just anything that you want to reuse it for in the kitchen or bedroom, bathroom, anything like that, because soy wax is food grade. It's super safe. Not all wax is like that. Most candles that you see at the store that you'll run into at like big box retailers, those are usually made with paraffin wax, which is a cheaper wax. It also can hold more fragrance. So it has what people call a stronger scent throw. And that's basically saying that it, it's going to have a more robust scent. You know, people really love that and that's really cool, but it's not terribly safe to breathe. It's an oil byproduct. Soy wax, which is a natural wax, is a lot safer. It's food safe. It's safe in your kitchen. It's safe to breathe. So this is a lot better if you want to start making your own candles or if you just want something that's a little bit more natural. You can also use coconut wax. That's something that people really like as well, but here I always use soy wax. So this mason jar will be safe to use again. So hopefully by now everybody's starting to melt their wax. I'm going to go ahead and just check the chat and see if there's any questions. I feel like with candle making, there's always like, we can go in so many different directions. Like we could talk about essential oil blending like for an hour. We could talk about different waxes for an hour. So it can really go in a lot of different directions. So I'm going to check on you guys. What's the Twitch channel name? Okay, great question. So um, the Twitch channel name is Pop Shop America. Let me see if I can drop a link. I sure can. And there you go. There's the Twitch link. Like wax, I act unpredictably. Oh my God, I love this. What is happening here? I act unpredictably when I'm too hot. Nice. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and get our vessel ready. We're gonna go ahead and pour our wax. So the first thing that I want to do, it might be a little bit different if you're making a different type of candle. Like, for example, if I'm making a candle with cotton wicks, I'm not going to do this step yet. So this is specific to wood wicks. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and peel my little sticker on both sides. Remember, it's double sided. Now, I want to get this in the dead center. Actually, you know what's going to be easiest is if I attach it here first in the dead center. And then I'm gonna try to place this in the center. Just wiggling my wick into place. It's really tight in there, so I definitely had to struggle a little bit to get that wick into place. 
Now we always want our wick to be as close to the center as possible. We don't want it to lean to the side or be off center because when the wick is in the center, we have more control over the heat. It's gonna make it a lot safer for the glass. So if we have a wick that's right on the edge, the wax is not gonna burn evenly. It's gonna pool along one side and the rest of the wax is not gonna melt. Additionally, it's gonna build up a lot of heat along that edge. So it, it's not necessarily safe. So we just wanna be extra careful with anything like that. Now, once we have our wick in place and our wax is melted, we can actually go ahead and pour our wax. So again, we wanna make sure that this is nice and cool. So I'm actually gonna to touch this right here. And this is a little bit warm. This is probably slightly warmer than what I would wanna pour it. I would wanna pour at less than 130 degrees. Ideally, it may be about 105. Some waxes have different um, temperatures that they recommend to pour it at. I believe this one is between 105 and 110. You can see right here, it's completely liquid. It's a little bit hot, so I'm actually going to just set it back down, and we'll talk about essential oils and, like, fun stuff like that for just a couple minutes while I let this cool just a little bit more. But hopefully it'll give you guys time if anybody's still melting their wax. It'll just give them a little bit of time to get caught up. So you guys might have noticed that this wax, when it's liquid, it looks kind of yellow. Totally normal, totally okay. When it solidifies, it's going to turn back to white. So let's just talk about the process, like, the next couple of steps before I pour in, let me see if this is still hot. Yeah, it's still hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on something safe, like right here. And that's gonna let this cool a little bit more so that I'm not on this hot plate. So this is hot, this is hot. So I'm separating them so they can cool faster. I've got this ready to go. I'm just letting that cool for a few minutes. And that's really everything that we need to focus on right now. So hopefully you guys are all caught up in the same place that I am. Now let's talk about the next few steps. So once I pour my wax, it's really just a waiting game. So it's just like our melting wax. Once we pour the wax, it's really just hurry up and wait. We're going to wait until we add our essential oils or our fragrances. We want to wait until the bottom of the wax starts to solidify. Candles always solidify, wax always solidifies from the bottom to the top. It always solidifies from the bottom to the top. So what we want to see is we want to see the bottom of the wax at the very bottom of this vessel, start to become opaque, start to become white. That's how we know it's solidifying. So right now this is completely liquid. It's very clear, it's transparent, it's kind of yellowish. It's going to become more opaque. It's gonna become more white. It's gonna look start to look cloudy. And that's when we know that it's time to add our essential oils. The reason that we don't add our essential oils now that we don't add our essential oils early is because when we light this candle, we wanna release as much fragrance as possible. So to optimize for that, the wax and the essential oils are, really the wax is created so that as it melts, it's gonna melt slightly hotter than those essential oils or those fragrances, and thus it's going to release scent. So essential oils actually burn at a slightly different temperature than the wax. So that's how we get that beautiful scent that we love. So thus, we're going to wait for it to start to solidify. Then we're going to add our essential oils. So let's just talk about essential oils versus fragrances. This is a huge hot topic, and everybody has a preference, one or the other. If you guys have a preference, please drop it in the chat. I would love to hear. My preference is essential oils because I love things that smell like very natural. For me, fragrances, I just haven't found any that I love. To me, they always smell a little bit fake or just, I don't know. I just, it doesn't feel 
terribly good for me, but that's okay. If that's just personal, if you disagree, that is totally okay. A lot of people prefer fragrances because they can have a stronger or a heavier throw. So fragrances, you can actually get a stronger scent than you can with essential oils. Additionally, there are some essential oils that are not safe to add to candles that are not safe to burn. So whatever oil you're thinking about adding to your candle, just make sure you do a little bit of research before you add it. Make sure that it's totally safe to add to that wax, to add to that candle and light it. Really more than candles, it's, you know, there's certain diffusers. It's really when you're doing essential oils in higher amounts, higher quantities, that's when you want to be a little bit more careful about um, if it's safe to be burning, safe to be breathing. Okay, so anytime you have a candle that's about this size, this is a six ounce vessel that I have right here. I'm going to add maybe about 50 drops of essential oils. For fragrances, you're probably going to use a lot less. It really just depends. Likely the brand that you're buying from will have some guidelines about you know, how much you should add to start. And then you can make a candle with it, see if the scent is too heavy, see if the scent is too light, and adjust from there for your future candles. So I see something popping up. Okay, cool. Check in the chat again. I have some nice little pop-ups on my screen. So I'm sure that this wax is safe to go ahead and pour. So let's move on. So one thing that I haven't mentioned, you guys might have noticed that my wick is a lot taller than the vessel. That's totally okay. We can actually cut it later. Anytime we're pouring wax, we wanna pour extremely slowly. We want to avoid getting any drizzles along the sides. Now, if you accidentally um, get wax along the edge of your vessel, it's okay. You can wait for it to completely solidify. Scrape it off with just a popsicle stick or your fingernail. It's going to be smudgy, waxy, kind of greasy. But once you remove all the wax itself, you can take a paper towel and wipe it down to remove any of that wax residue. And you can make it as good as new. But we always want to pour slowly, carefully, cautiously. Now, I'm going to get really close with this wax because I want you to see how much I filled in this vessel. Now, see how I just poured that wax right here. And notice that this wax is cool enough. This jar is cool enough for me to handle it. And it's totally safe to the touch. So just like I was saying that we always want to make sure that our wax is nice and cool when we pour it, we want it to be safe to the touch. Okay, I am just running through all of these tabs just to make sure we covered everything, make sure you got like all the good stuff out of this workshop because now it's the waiting game, right? We're waiting for the bottom to start to become opaque. It's gonna to start to become white. It's gonna get cloudy, but the top is still gonna be clear. That's when we're gonna add our essential oils. So until then, I mean, we've got all the time in the world. So we can just hang out, talk about essential oil blending, talk about all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm just gonna run through all of these titles, make sure you guys feel good about all these different things. Cause these are all like the basic subjects or things that we need to cover with candle making. So we talked about how to melt wax. You can either melt it on the stove top or you can melt it in the microwave. If you're gonna do a microwave, use a microwave safe bowl or that mason jar with the lid off. 30 second intervals, stir thoroughly and completely. Keep microwaving at 30 second intervals until it's completely liquid. Again, we want it to look like so. If you're using a stove top method, that's my preferred method you are going to want to make a double boiler, use a little pot, add a tiny bit of water at the bottom, take your mason jar, lid off, always lid off, put it in the center, and just let it go low and slow until it's liquid. Now, one thing you might notice is that as you melt this wax, the volume is gonna go down. 
right? This is solid wax and it's got so much air in here. So as you melt it, it's the volume is just going to keep going down. You can add more until it's about right here. When to add dry decorations. We haven't gotten there yet, but we will. Essential oils versus fragrances. We did talk about that. Wood wicks versus cotton wicks. You know, we didn't really talk about this. Let's talk about this for a second. So how are wood wicks and cotton wicks different? Well, wood wicks are super pretty. They're so nice. I mean, they're very like high end feeling, but they don't burn quite as evenly or consistently as a cotton wick. So cotton wick is probably ideal for like making a basic candle, but wood wicks are so beautiful that that's what makes them ideal. Now wood wicks, even more so than a cotton wick, we need to keep it trimmed very, very short. So once this wax is completely solidified, I'm not gonna trim this wick today. I'm gonna trim this wick tomorrow or several days from now. And then anytime I burn it, I'm always gonna keep it trimmed. I want it to be maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe slightly longer above that top of the wax. Now wood wicks, um, they kind of like spark and fizzle and they make this beautiful sound while they're burning. Sometimes they go out naturally. It's totally okay. It's totally normal. You can just relight it. You can trim it if you're having a hard time keeping it lit. Some people like to actually add two wicks side by side. And that can help a little bit. That can help it burn a little bit more evenly. But I think that, you know, sometimes it doesn't really help that much. You know, maybe it's just like wasteful or it's wasting wicks. So you do not necessarily need to do that. When to add the fragrance, fragrances, we did talk about that. We're waiting for the bottom of the wax to start to become opaque. We'll talk about this later. And let's go ahead and talk about essential oil blending. Now, anytime you're getting a candle that's made by somebody else or looking for a candle in store or making one, it's really rare that you find a candle that just has one scent. Likely it's a blend of multiple scents. So for example, like the essential oils that are in this kit, there's ginger, there's Lang Lang, there's frankincense, there's clary sage, and there's peppermint. And you could blend a few of them, many of them. Oftentimes um, high-end perfumes have even a few dozen different scents that are blended together. There's so many different ways that you can do that. It's all just an experiment. So coming up with your own custom blends, I hope that it's a fun experience. And it's definitely not something that you should, that there's like a right or wrong answer, or there's one way or there's a perfect way. So in front of me for today, I have Lang Lang, Jasmine, Tangerine, and Cedarwood. So I have top notes, middle notes, and base notes here. So let's talk about that because that's the fun stuff. I've got my handy dandy charts and I'm going to turn this block off so y'all can see me. This is the good stuff. This is the nerdy stuff. I'm into this. So let me drop this link in the chat so you guys can download the same thing that I'm working from. All right, here we go. Everything you need to know about essential oil blending. So that's going to be right here in the chat. And you guys are welcome to check this out later. Check it out now. You can also get there. Use this QR code. Put essential oils in the search. Scroll down just a few items until you see this blog post, everything you need to know about essential oil blending. Now, this is super fun. Right here, so you can download this file, so you don't have to follow, follow along like this. We've got some different ratios of 
top notes, middle notes, also called heart notes, and bass notes, and how they're blended, what percentages they're blended to make some different traditional types of perfumes or fragrance blends. Now let's talk about what those things are. Top notes are actually the scents that hit your olfactory senses first. They're punchy, they're bright, they usually have the smallest molecules, and they usually fade the fastest. So things like lemon, citrus, grapefruit, things like that are going to be your top notes. Your middle notes, also called heart notes, are herbs and flowers, and they kind of have some different qualities of both top note and bass note. They're kind of in the middle. Bass note are things that are going to be heavier. The molecule size is usually larger. It's going to be things that linger, the scents that linger for a long time. So things that are musky, like amber, sandalwood, things that are kind of like frankincense, things that um, are kind of heavy and unusual. And when you start to blend them together, that's when you get some really interesting scents. So you don't have to use all of those three different things. It's just traditionally done um, that way. So check this file out. It's really fun. On that same page, you'll also find some different recipe ideas. So if you're just getting started blending essential oils, there's some different recipes that you can follow for just some really yummy scents, things that work really well together. But again, it's all an experiment. So it's definitely something that I want you guys to have fun with, try something new, see what works. I also have this fun file of some different common essential oils and things that pair really well. So this is really similar to this other one right here. So I'm taking a look at my candle and this is something that we're definitely gonna wanna do is like I get down low and I'm just looking to see if that wax has solidified enough yet. And it's actually quite cool to the touch, but it's not ready yet. So I am not going to add these essential oils. Again, this is part of the process. You know, we just have this like little bit of a waiting game. It's really normal with candle making and it's always going to be different. Sometimes your wax is at, at a slightly different temperature. You know, instead of being at 105 degrees, it's at 110 degrees. That's going to make a difference. The temperature in the room is going to make a difference. You know, if you're running the AC on high because it's the summertime or if you're sitting right next to a heater, if you're sitting right next to the AC, if you're in a sunny window, all of those things are going to be factors into how long it takes for your wax to solidify. So it's just one of those things. It's going to vary from person to person. It's going to vary from time to time. And that's just totally normal. So I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about what essential oils I want to blend together. And I want to show you guys how to open these if you get a kit from Pop Shop America. Now, again, you guys do not have to get any of these supplies from us. There's lots of different places that you can find them. But if you do, I just want to show you these little tiny bottles. They're super cute. They're very kawaii because they're like tiny, almost like little dollhouse pieces. Well, let's just take a look up close. Right here, we've got this little bottle, and I just unscrew it. And then, oopsie daisy, I have another little piece right there. Well, that's fun. Well, it kind of almost looks like, oh, I could just drop it through there. And definitely some of those top notes or some of the smaller molecules that also sort of kind of drip faster. That might work through this little hole. But honestly, you might want to just take this off because something that we include in the kit is this other little bottle with a little dropper on there. So this is a great way to start to make your blends. This bottle right here is empty, so you can pour your blends into there. So you might want to take this piece off so that you can interchange this dropper lid, this dropper vial across all of your different vials to make your blends. So to do that, the easiest way, 
Now they do on Amazon, by the way, or maybe even on Etsy, you can find essential oil vial openers. And it's like a little plastic piece that has some different little hooky things that you can use to sort of wedge it open. I do not have good luck with those things. I don't find that they work very well. I think what works a lot better is if you just take a pair of scissors, wedge it underneath that white piece, and I'm just like wiggling it back and forth and see, take a look at that. So I've got that little piece out and away from my essential oil vial. So I'll go ahead and seal that back up. Now we're getting there. Okay, so the wax is starting to solidify on the bottom, but we're just gonna wait another couple of minutes. I wanna see it white. So I don't wanna see it just like starting to get slightly cloudy on the bottom. No, like I wanna see it white. And here's the thing. Once our wax starts to solidify on the bottom, the whole process gets faster and faster. So waiting for the bottom to start to solidify to add our essential oils is a lot longer of a process than waiting for the rest of the wax to dry to where we can start to add our dry decorations on top. So one thing that we haven't talked about yet, let's go ahead and talk about our dry decorations. So I wanna use this photo. I'm gonna use my little dry decorations that I have right here. And let's talk about candle safety. So I've got these little rose petals. I've got these little gemstones. And I want the top of my candle to look about like this. Now here's something that's really important. I know that it's tempting to add so many different things and really cover the top of your candle thoroughly. It's not necessarily the best idea. Now, all of these different things, all of these different flowers right here are flammable, just like smudge. So just like you burn Palo Santo or sage in your home, this rose is going to burn the same way. So if you're burning this candle and you have a ton of rose right here, this flame could easily ignite all of this. And instead of having just like a little tiny flame, all of a sudden the, the entire top of your candle is burning. Now, that's not necessarily the dangerous part in and of itself. The thing that you really want to watch out for is to make sure that it's not overheating the glass. What you don't want is for that glass to get too hot and that glass to break. All of the glass we have is heat safe. Any candle vessels that you're making, pretty much anywhere, that glass is going to be safe for heat. But there's other factors that can come into play. Like, for example, like we don't know how this glass vessel was handled before I acquired it. So it could have been dropped a million times and have like splinter kind of hairline cracks inside of it that we wouldn't necessarily know until all of a sudden we have a huge flame on top of it. And that's the thing that makes it crack. So we just want to be careful in that regard. Gemstones. Now gemstones, we definitely just want to add like one or two, make it cute, but we don't want to go crazy with that. That's actually going to retain that heat and it's even going to sink down. So what we really want to be careful about is over time, as we burn our candle and we get to the bottom of the wax, what we don't want is for that um, gemstone to sit at the bottom of the vessel, retaining all that heat, and then potentially crack that glass down there. So you don't have to use rose petals or gemstones like what I'm using. There's a ton of different options. Like just from what we carry, for example, we've got chamomile. We've got jasmine. We have rose buds. So buds instead of petals. So cute. We've got lavender. Little tiny seashells. Those are very cute. And marigold. You could also consider drying your own flowers. I wouldn't recommend adding fresh because you don't want that extra moisture and you don't want anything to slowly dry and decay inside of your candle. So you're gonna to wanna to use something that's already dry. Oh, we also have corn flowers right here. These are little purple flowers that are great. Corn flowers are great for soap because they retain their color really well. 
Well, we're starting to get cloudy. We're getting there. So let me show you what this looks like right now. I don't think you can see it on screen, but we're definitely starting to get cloudy right down here. So that's good. That's really good. But we're not quite there yet. But notice still cool to the touch. Totally safe to handle. So again, once I'm ready to add my essential oils, I'm gonna add about 50 drops for a candle this size. And that's a good starting off point. And then you could always decide if you wanna add more or less for future candles. I'm gonna use my popsicle wax to stir those essential oils completely and thoroughly into the wax. And then I'm just gonna let it set until the rest of it starts to solidify. And then I can add those dry decorations to the top. Now you'll know it's time to add the dry decorations to the top when instead of just the bottom being opaque and solidifying, the whole thing is gonna to start to look opaque and pretty much solidified, except the very top is gonna to still look a little bit buttery, like a little bit shiny, but the rest of it looks done and finished. That's when you know that it's time to add those dry decorations. Because you want it to be able to press into the wax but you don't want it to sink down. That way you can see it and really create a beautiful pattern on top. So I've got my jasmine, I've got my cedar wood, I've got my tangerine, and I've got lang lang. And I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do like a cedar wood and lang lang and just the tiniest little bit of tangerine. Now I showed you those tiny bottles that we have and that's what's included in our kit. But if you're working from home, likely your supplies are gonna look more like this. They're gonna be larger bottles. If yours look like this, all you need to do is just unscrew that lid. You might have a little safety cap. If you do, you can use the same thing that I did, these scissors, and just pop that safety cap off. And I'm gonna go ahead and get all of mine ready. And then last, I have a little pipette right here. And this is really nice because I can measure the drops and mine even has the measurements along the side. And I'm just gonna get this ready because, I mean, it is almost time. It gets faster and faster as it goes. So this is definitely something that like, it's just, you wait forever, you know, for the first step and then it's, you know, faster to do the rest of it. But this is good. So if you remember, I did say like in the beginning when I was pouring that wax, like at, before I poured it, like, oh, this feels a little bit hot. And it definitely was because oftentimes when I'm teaching this as a workshop, like this is the most popular workshop we teach. So, I mean, I teach this all the time to like team building groups or like, you know, bridal events or like just friends and stuff that want to do it like virtually through Zoom. And ordinarily, if I'm completely prepped and have everything perfect and just so this would have solidified a lot faster and so I know that this particular hot plate that I'm using even the lowest setting is quite hot so in the future I can just turn it off early and so just knowing your environment like little things like that you'll get to know it as you make more and more candles it'll get easier as you go kind of controlling all those different things I'm going to check the chat and just see if anybody has any questions before I drop these essential oils. All right, it looks like everybody's good. Well, it's starting to rain again here. And it's definitely starting to become opaque on the bottom. Let me see if, I want you guys to be able to see this on camera. But I just don't know with that brown jar 
how easy it is to see. I You can kind of barely see it. I mean, it's really tough on camera. It's one of those things in real life. I mean, it would just be so much better if you guys could really see it thoroughly. Maybe if I get super close. No, that doesn't help at all. Y'all, I can't do anything to help. But it is, it's so cloudy on the bottom. It's really nice and white, like right along the bottom. Maybe if I, hold on, let me, I have an idea. One last idea. I'm gonna use my phone. Let's see if this helps. I have like the flashlight on my phone. Oh, it does. Okay, look at that. So you can see now how that bottom is starting to become opaque. See how it's like nice and white and thick and cloudy down at the bottom. It's cool to the touch because I have my hands on it. So now we can go ahead and add our essential oils. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my gosh. I mean, sometimes I'm like, are we going to be here all night? I One time I was doing a candle making workshop and everybody overheated their wax, whoops. And I mean, I, I swear I told them so many times, like don't overheat your wax. And I mean, everybody's wax was so hot. It was like two full hours. I mean, it was, I think everybody did not have the best time, but it's just, it's one of those things. So just be aware that it happened. I wanna refer back to my chart one more time before I actually drop these oils. I want to show you guys this. Now, again, you can get this from the chat. So just check the chat. I'll pull it up just in case you're joining late. You see this late. Let me just. Kabloom right there. So that's our link right here. So I just want to show you guys this again. Now, this isn't something you have to follow. This is just something that's very traditional in the perfume, fragrance, blending, candle making world of how much top note, middle note, base note you might consider using. Tiny bit of top note, a little bit more middle note, lots of base note, or like an hourglass. Again, this is something that's very creative. You don't have to follow this. Sorry, I did not mean to pull that other one out. But I just want you guys to be aware of it, that there are standards that people have kind of put in place. Now, I'm going to... Add, let's see, for my 50 drops, I'm going to do 10, 20, and 20. So I'm doing 10 tangerine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. Ooh, that was 11. Squeezing it out thoroughly and completely. I'm always working from top note to middle note to base note when I'm dropping my oils. The reason that I do it that way is because it's a little bit easier on the palette. Like if you fill up all of your um, scent palette with top note, then it's not quite as heavy and dense once you get to those middle notes and base notes. Um, I also just like it. It's like a good habit for um, the pipette because if you remember me saying that the base notes, um, the molecule size is heavier and they're a lot denser, then that can be true with um, the way that it like, holds onto your pipette, not just the way that it's sitting inside of the wax or sitting inside of that candle itself. So hopefully that makes sense. Like more of it is gonna get, it's gonna be harder to get it out of that pipette. So that's why I work from top note, tangerine to middle note, which I'm using the Lang Lang to cedar wood last that base note. Again, I did 10 drops of the tangerine, 20 drops of Lang Lang, and now I'm doing 20 drops of cedarwood. One, two. All right, and I just squeeze all of it out. A little bit is always going to sit inside of your pipette. So you're gonna wanna put this on top of a paper towel or somewhere that's safe. Just anywhere where it's not going to stain anything or leak. And then I always get the lids on my essential oils next, even before I stir 
the essential oils into the wax just because if you accidentally spill one of these, I mean, it is the worst. It's like the worst thing that could ever happen. So again, I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I want to stir the essential oils into the wax slowly, thoroughly, completely. So if the essential oils are not blended into the wax, then the essential oils will just sit on the surface of the wax. You will be able to see it, like physically see oil on top of your candle. When your candle solidifies, it is not going to work. If that happens, it's totally okay. What you want to do is melt a little bit more wax and just sandwich those essential oils into the candle by adding a little bit more wax on top. It's a normal thing to happen because when you have this liquid wax and you have these liquid essential oils, you cannot see the difference. There's no way to know if they're completely and thoroughly blended. The best thing that you can do is just over stir, like stir for much longer than what seems reasonable just to make sure that those essential oils, oils are completely blended. Now, if you remember me saying that I left a little bit of space in this jar for this, um, like I didn't fill the wax up to the very top, and that's to actually give myself room to stir the essential oils into the wax without any spilling over. I'm still doing this really slowly and really carefully because I want to prevent any drips. Just like I was when I was pouring that wax, I'm being slow and careful as I'm blending to also prevent any smudges or stains. Now, if you remember me saying in the beginning, if I do smear any of the wax along the side of the vessel, all you have to do is wait for it to solidify completely scrape it off with a popsicle stick or your fingernail or whatever works. Then take a paper towel and wipe off any of that wax residue with the paper towel. Now that should be blended enough. I mean, it's hard to say because you can't really see it. I'm just going to go ahead and set my popsicle stick right here. And let's take a look at this now. Like you will see that it is so much more opaque and solid than it even was a minute ago. Let's go ahead and use our handy phone method. I love how well this works. Now here you can see that it's much more solid on the bottom and it's, you can't tell terribly well, but it's quite cloudy up top as well. So again, we've got the waiting game. We're waiting to add our dry decorations. We wanna wait until all of this is completely opaque and just the very top is gonna to be buttery, completely opaque not partially opaque, not cloudy like how it is now. The bottom is gonna be completely opaque, only the top is gonna to be slightly buttery, and that's when we wanna add the dry decorations. We wait to add the dry decorations so that they sit on the surface and we can create some cool designs, make it super cute. Um, we definitely don't wanna drop it early. If we do, it's just gonna sink down, and then it's gonna put our candle at greater risk of just, accidentally overheating the glass, any of those problems that I mentioned before. So we've got the waiting game. So I'll check the chat again and see if you guys are doing okay. Let me know if you have any questions. Take a little sippy sip on my punch. And I'll tell you guys, oh, let me pull up the coupon code one more time. And I'll tell you guys about the upcoming events one more time since we are pretty close to being done. Once we have those dry decorations, we are done. Let me tell you about what to do after we finish our candle as well. So boom, we've got our coupon code. So this is good until tomorrow morning. So if you want to use this QR code, feel free, shop it up. Use that code Craft with Brittany. It's 15% off everything. And this will go away tomorrow. 
So upcoming events, June 10th, we have a super sale on handmade goods. It's going to be so fun. It's at 11 a.m. It's Saturday and everything is going to be less than $10. I mean, we have cute stuff like dresses, t-shirts, jewelry, art, prints, housewares, candles. Like we have so much fun stuff. It's a ton of different makers from across the country. Everything is made in the U.S. Super cute and so much fun. So hopefully you guys can be there. June 15th is astrology, zodiac embroidery. It doesn't matter what your sign is. You can make it for a friend or a loved one. It doesn't have to be your sign. It could be another sign. All of the zodiac signs and actually two different designs are included in the kit that we have. You can also find that on our website. It's just called astrology embroidery. You can find that through our events as well. Or you can just make up your own and just learn how to embroider. We'll take you through all the basics of embroidery everything that you need to know to get started. It's so fun. And embroidery, it's like lightweight, it's inexpensive, you can travel with it. So that's definitely a craft that I recommend getting to know and spending some time with. On June 22nd, we're making macrame rainbow earrings. So we're going to make some jewelry pieces using some macrame. It'll be super cute, super fun. June 29th, we're doing relaxing color. That's for our subscription box, Adult Coloring Monthly. And we're going to focus on doodles. And we're going to have doodles that are summer themed. So think swimming pools and snow cones and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And it'll be really simple. So you do not have to be an expert artist to be able to follow along. It's going to be really great for beginners as well. So hopefully you guys can join us for some of those events. You can find those also in that QR code right there. We're super close. Let me show you guys this. I'm just going to keep bringing it close so you guys can see how this wax is solidifying. And let me, I wish you could, you can't really see it if I, and I can't really tilt it yet. But now hopefully you can see like it's so cloudy, right? Definitely opaque on the bottom. It's getting there, but we still need a few more minutes for those dry decorations. Maybe like five more minutes. So we'll be like right at the hour. We try to make this an hour, but this is definitely like candle making is like pushing it. When we do our big candles, which is like our pressed flower candle kit, I mean, that is like an hour and a half. Like good luck to us because it's so big. It takes a lot longer for that wax to solidify. So the workshop just always takes a little bit longer. So what are we going to do once our candle is completely solidified? We are not going to trim this wick. We are not going to trim the wick for at least a day. But if you guys have patience, you could just leave this candle alone completely for two full weeks to let the candle cure. So let me see. I think I've got a title for that. Boom! Let the candle cure. So candle wax and scents will continue to blend. And it's like they become friends and they get to know each other. And they cure, which is about a two-week process. So if you have patience, you could actually leave your candle alone for two full weeks before you burn it and your scent will be optimized. But even if you, you know, don't have that kind of patience, you have to wait at least a day to burn it because you need to wait a day to trim that wick. Remember, we want to keep it about an eighth of an inch high. We want it to be really, really short. The reason that you're going to want to wait a day is because even when this candle looks solidified even when it's dry enough to be able to add our dry decorations to the top it's not dry enough to be able to withstand the pressure of us holding that wick and trimming the wick you'll see that if you trim the wick too early like if i trimmed it tonight i'm going to jostle that wax a little bit and it's going to funnel around that wick if it happens it's totally okay all you have to do is melt a little bit more wax fill it in and just make sure you don't do it again in the future. So we want to wait at least a day to burn our candle or trim our wick. But if you have so much patience, then you could wait two weeks. Keep your wick trimmed to eighth, an inch, eighth of an inch. 
make sure you stick around while, while your candle's burning. That's just anytime, anywhere, just for safety. But especially because we're adding these cute dry decorations to the top. I would just go ahead and make sure that you're home, that you're around while you're burning it. And also, you know, we don't want to leave candles, you know, unattended because if you have pets, if you have kids, or if just the wind blows the wrong way, something goes terribly wrong in your house, you never know what could happen. So we just want to be extra careful with anything that's flammable. Now we're ready. We're buttery. Now, did you guys see how at first it like takes forever for that bottom to solidify and now it is going faster and faster? And so that's like what I was mentioning before. It gets faster as we go. So let's go ahead and take our gemstones and our rose petals. I'm going to go ahead and open these up. And I'm just going to add a little sprinkle and probably in a way that will create kind of a cute design. So I'm gonna to try to do almost like a moon shape along one side. It's pretty challenging. And then once I find a good spot for these pieces, I can even start to press it down slightly just to make sure that it's really embedded in that wax. Now I wanna show you what this looks like and then I'm gonna add some gemstones. Now here's what this looks like so far. And see how it's like dry enough to where I can tilt it now? Now I'm gonna add a few gemstones. Again, I just wanna add a few. I don't wanna add a lot. Safety first. I like laugh. Every time I say safety first, I laugh because for anybody that's been to Burning Man, there's a saying Safadi third, which is like mispronouncing safety. And then like, instead of safety first, it's like safety third. And I just like, I hear myself and I just always think of that. All right, so I've got two little pink ones and a clear one. And I don't know where to put these, maybe on the other side. Yeah, I'll put them on the other side. And then I'm also just pressing these into the surface of the wax. And here we go. We're done. We did it. We managed to get it done in an hour and three minutes. I had my doubts about halfway through this. So I'll check the chat really quickly. Let me know if you guys have any questions. It looks like everybody's good. So we'll be back next Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time for our next craft class. We're doing a special event on Saturday, this Saturday at 11 a.m. And we will see you next time. I hope that you enjoy your candles and happy making.